by uh, 1997, and by the fall in particular, I had been picked by our team to analyze our first really large sample of supernovae, about 16. And having done all the steps in the analysis came the moment of truth where uh, the deceleration rate, which we write in the variable uh, Q naught, set by the supernovae would then imply how much mass was in the universe. If it was decelerating a lot, if this was a big number, then the mass of the universe would be a big number and the universe would recollapse. So I wrote a simple computer program to tell me what the answer was and hadn't yet noticed that something very strange was going on. So this is a key page from my lab notebook. When I evaluated what the mass of the universe was, I got an unphysical, nonsensical answer, a negative value. That wasn't even one of the possibilities. It wasn't in column A or column B. Uh, it was very strange, and what it meant was if this term was negative, that really meant this term on the left was negative. That is, the universe wasn't decelerating, it was accelerating. And I just hadn't noticed it. And when I, you ask a computer sort of a dumb question, you get a dumb answer, which is, uh, the universe would have to have negative mass. Now, the real reason is because I assumed this thing that Brian had described, this cosmological constant, didn't exist. And so I quickly realized that the other way to get this number on the left to be negative for the universe to accelerate is to have an overwhelming amount of this term on the right, this Einstein's cosmological constant. And so a few days later...